本日はね、山口先生、筋膜リリースの作りのモデルをね。
されたりですね、やっぱりちょこちょこ周りに発生してきた組織、いろんな組織がありますけども、こういった調具合だったり、柔らかさだったりですね、こういった前後のバランスとかですね、左右のバランスによって、ちょこちょこアラーメントというのは変わってきますよということなんです。で、印象が多いですね、ちょこちょこアラーメントどうなっているかというと、ここたちは、まあ、体重をかけたとき、現状体重をかけた状態で生活をしたり、ね、歩いたり、走ったりということがあるので、体重をかけたときに、このちょこちょこ、ちょこちょこ、後ろ側にこっちに移動してきたら、このちょこちょこ、これは反対の動きをするので、内側に倒れてくるんですね、こっちに内側に倒れてきます。で、逆にこの小骨がこの内側。はい、皆さんよろしくお願いします。ロコベセトミアの斉藤です。今回は足の機能について、バーメンで前回に続いてですね。はい、どうも、私です。今回はですね、側部について話をしていきます。で、側部の中でも今回は、腸骨っていうですね、この腸骨の上にある。そういった前後のバランスとかですね、左右のバランスによって、この腸骨のアライメントっていうのが変わってきますよってことなんですね。で、臨床で多いですね、この腸骨のアライメントどうなってるかっていうと、腸骨っていうのは、体重をかけたとき、現状体重をかけた状態で今生活をしたりですね、歩いたり走ったりすることがあるので、体重をかけたときに、この腸骨ですね、腸骨が外側にこっちに移動してきたら、この腸骨は反対の動きをするので、内側に倒れてくるんですね。こっちに内側に倒れてきます。で逆に、この小骨がこの内側、こえー、と海外方向に倒れてきたら、この小骨っていうのは外側にですね、反対の動きになるので、外側に倒れてきます。で、臨床的にどっちが多いかっていうと、圧倒的にですね、小骨がですね、内側に倒れてしまってる、内側に倒れてしまってるっていうパターンが非常に多いです。で、ここがですね、内側に倒れてくるとどうなるかっていうと、小骨の上にこの硬いですね、頸骨があるんで、小骨が内側に倒れてくると、硬いがですね、外側傾斜してくるんですね。よくですね、膝関節応援の方も多いと思いますけども、諸骨がですね、内側に倒れてきてしまう。このアーチがですね、もうぐしゃっと潰れてしまって、この状態になってしまうと、片足立ちをした時にですね、側部に対してですね、この硬いのですね、外側傾斜、外に傾いた状態ですね、この斜めにですね、なってしまうっていう状態になっている人が多いんですね。で、これをですね、硬いをですね、まあ、無理やり内心させたりとかですね、軽注意にさせようと思ってもなかなかできなくて、まあ、これ何をですね、改善しないとダメかって言ったら、側部ですね、しっかり側部のこの諸骨のアライメントっていうのを見ていかないとダメなんですね。じゃあ、諸骨がですね、この内側に倒れてくるのか、なんで内側に倒れてくるかっていう話をたまらうとしたら、小骨がですね、内側に倒れてくるってことは、この小骨がですね、外側にですね、体内方向、小骨関節で言うんであれば、体内方向にですね、動いてくるわけなんですけども、で、その時に、えー、ポイントになってくるのが、この小骨の前側にあるショパール関節ですね。ショパール関節っていうですね、前側にある関節の位置がとても重要にですね、なってきます。で、えっ、ー、と、前側の関節どうなってるかっていうと、ここのですね、小立方関節っていうですね、外側の関節があります。で、小立方関節って、立方骨が一番要になってくるので、外側縦アーチの中で立方骨がしっかりトップに上がってないとダメなんですけども、この小骨に対してですね、立方骨が下側に下がってしまってるんですね。8割9割の人はこの立方骨が加勢してしまってるって言われたりするので、この立方骨が下に下がってきてしまってるっていうのがあります。で、こっちが下がってきてしまうと、じゃあ内側ですね、どうなっちゃうかっていうと、内側ですね、上がってきそうに見えます。先ほど縦足が上がってきそうにですね、感じますけども、実際は修正骨がですね、トップにないとダメなんですね、本当は。けど、修正骨がトップにあるんじゃなくて、こっちの内側の修骨がトップにある状態になってしまいます。なので、ここをですね、トップにした状態、一番上に上がった状態を作りたいんですね。でも実際にですね、側部のマルアラーメンとかの人は、こっちが、中上骨が、中上骨がトップになって、こっちの副上骨がですね、トップになってしまっている状態。そのまま足をついてしまうので、ここですね、ショパール関節が、位置がですね、ずれてしまうせいで、まあ、運動連鎖っていうのもあって、この諸骨がですね、内側内側に倒れてきてしまいます。もちろん、小骨からの影響もありますけども、えー、一個前の関節、ショパール関節からの影響も非常に大きいので、今回はこっちのですね、問題をですね、改善していこうということなんですけども、えー、じゃあ、ここですね、ショパール関節どういうふうに改善させていくかっていうと、外側がですね、こっち下がってきてしまっているんですね。で、内側がここが、鉄上骨が上に上がってきてしまっているんですね。こういう、こういうですね、速度のねじれがですね、生まれてくるわけなんですよ。なので、これをしっかり改善させましょうってなってくると、まずですね、この外側の立方骨をですね、上側にグッと持ち上げるっていう作業が大事になってきます。で、上側にこう持ち上げていくんですけども、その時に、まあ、邪魔するのが、ここの脂肪体とか、外側のですね、長期回転筋、外側の筋肉がありますけども、えっと、ここのですね、横側、こうですね、しっかりと柔らかくしてあげてください。柔らかくした状態で、その状態で後ろにですね、しっかり立方骨を上側に持ち上げていってあげるっていう作業が大事になってきます。まずは、外側をしっかり柔らかくですね、緩めて、その上で立方骨を上に上げてあげる。で、もしでですね、まあ難しかったら、ボールペンをですね、こう踏んだ状態とかでも上げて、移動してあげてもいいので、そういった方法でやってあげればいいかなと思います。で、まずはですね、外側をアプローチします。で、まず外側のアプローチが終わってから、こっちの内側のアプローチをしていくわけなんですけども、外側でしっかりですね、この立方骨が上がる状態を作れたら、内側のアプローチをしなきゃダメなんですね。で、内側に関しては、こっちの、うんと、もし、外転筋かなもし外転筋というですね、こっち少子の反対、もし外転筋という筋肉があります。で、ここの筋肉もですね、硬くなりやすくて、ここをですね、しっかり柔らかくしてあげます。ほとんどの人はここが固まってるせいで、こっちの内側の縦足のですね、動きがガチッと固まってしまってですね、柔軟性、あの、クッション機能とかもなくなってしまってるので、まず内側の縦足のこの母子外転筋をしっかりと柔らかくしてあげてください。まあ、脂肪体とかもあるので、まあ、そういった脂肪組織っていうのも柔らかくしてあげる必要があります。で組織がある程度動きが出るような状態になったら、修正骨をですね、ここトップに持ってきたいんで、修正骨をしっかりトップに持ってきた。ここがですね、下がらないように、下から指をですね、添
。で、ここのバランスが整った状態で足をかけたら、その小骨ですね、虚骨ですね、虚骨,骨,骨が内側に落ち込まずにですね、しっかり、上で直立化しやすいような、ね、状態になってきます。なので、まずは、えー、ショパルパスの位置を整えるとしたら、こういうですね、整え方っていうのがあるので、知っておいてください。で、これですね、内側からしたらダメなのかっていう質問とかあるんですけども、内側からしてしまうとですね、えー、とあんまり良くなくて、まずは外側のですね、組織をしっかり緩めた状態、こっちをフリーにして、こっちを上げた状態を、外側をしっかり上げた状態を作って、鉄条骨を下で落とすというです、ね。簡単に言ったら、こう、内側にですね、側をねじるような動きを埋めたら、しっかり足がですね、内側外側のアーチをしっかり作った状態で、こう、足を設置できるので、この状態をですね、しっかり作れれば、この後ろにあるですね、ちょうど後ろにあるショパールパンツを構成している、この諸骨っていう位置もですね、調整ができてきます。はい。で、もちろんですね、今、ショパールパンツだけの話をさせてもらいましたけども、もちろん、高速部のですね、小骨、小骨の位置もですね、まあ、内外側の飛行筋だったり、方形骨筋の影響とかももちろんありますし、後ろの皮膚筋だったり、ひらめ筋だったり、アキレス筋からの影響ももちろんあります。なので、高速部分もですね、もちろん必要があるんですけども、まあ、この1個前のショパール関節の影響、ここの問題って結構印象が多いので、ぜひですね、ここの問題を改善するだけでも、ちょこっとの位置っていうのも、ある程度整ってくるっていうことができるので、ぜひですね、ちょっと知ってもらって、ショパール関節の位置をしっかり調整することで、タンクスティン、トランジションメタル、ワーフラーマイトアンアザータンクスティン、ベアリングオーズ。The incandescent light bulb, which was commercialized at the end of the 19th century and propagated in the first decade of the 20s, 20s transformed daily life. Once Dimly lit by candles, oil lamps, and tangas, and always in danger from fires and explosions. Homes are brighter and safer than they had ever been. One of the vital elements of the modern light bulb is the tungsten filament, which created the brighter, longer lasting light bulb. A, a burning issue. When elders talk about inconsistent light bulbs, their children born in the early years of the 21st century.
20th century, we'll probably look at them pityingly, pityingly as we do our grandparents and the parents who reminisce about good old vin vinyl, LPS, and uh, cassette tapes. For them, after incan incandescent bulbs are phased out in most parts of the world by the end of the next decade, domestic lighting will be provided by compact fluorescent lamps, which are currently made up of linked tubes or spirals that look nothing like the conventional arrangement of a filament inside a glass bulb. In the UK, which began in phase out of incandescent bulbs with the rest of the EU in 2009. The voices of reaction have already been heard. Grumbling that their God-given right to high-energy light bulbs Grumbling that their God giving right to high energy light bulbs are being infringed. infringed. In historical terms, however, the right is an extremely recent one, as the first tungsten filament was introduced exactly 100 years ago. Our true light heritage consists of the oil lamps and candles that were used for millennia. The Industrial Revolution gave us two new ways of lighting our homes, workplaces and cities. Kerosene, distilled from petroleum and town gas produced from coal. The drawback of these materials was that they depended, uh, depended on a, a naked flame, which provided little illumination, caused air pollution, and, and uh, occasionally exploded. Safety lumps. Also, Thomas Edison is the light bulb. He was one of over 20 inventors of scientists who contributed to its development. The first practical demonstration of the principle came in 1802 when the British chemist Humphrey Davy passed an electrical current through a platinum wire. But without enclosing it in a protective glass bulb, Davy's light experiment was just a scientific curiosity, not a commercial venture. The light of produced was not very bright. The platinum filament was ex expensive and burned up quickly. And the demonstration had taken place in an edge long before large-scale electricity generation was technically feasible. Edison's genius was not the invention of the light bulb but its successful commercialization. Admittedly, he had the good product, a bulb with a curved carbonized bamboo filament that could burn for 1,200 hours and that outshone and outlasted most of its rivals. But 
there were several fossil stages needed before the world got the 100 watt incandescent light bulb. In 1904, a Hungarian company produced the first tungsten filament, which improved on the carbon alternatives. Finally, in 1906, William College of General Electric de developed a ductile tungsten which allowed the wire to be tightly coiled like a miniature spring. This is not only extended the life of the filament, but it also produced a much brighter light. The last filament was to fill the bulb with an inert gas that increased the bulb's luminosity and reduced blackening. Blackening. Um, by 1914, GE's tungsten filament light bulbs were the market leaders, outlasting and outselling all their rivals. Oh. The in incandescent light bulb, which was commercialized at the end of the 19th century, and perfected in the first decade of the twenties, uh, first decade of the twenties, transformed daily life. Once timely light lit by candles, oil lamps, and town gas, and always in danger from fires and explosions, homes were brighter and safer than they had ever been. One of the vital elements of the modern light bulb is the tungsten filament which created the brighter, long-lasting light bulb. A burning issue. When elders talk about incandescent, incandescent light bulbs, their children born in the early years of the 21st century will probably look at them pityingly, as we do our grandparents and parents who uh, reminisce, remi reminisce about good old uh, vinyl LPS and cassette tapes. For them, after incandescent bulb are phased phased out in most part of the world by the end of the next decade, domestic lightning will be provided by compact fluorescent lamps, which are currently made up of linked tubes or spirals that look nothing like the conventional arrangement of a filament inside a glass bulb. In the UK, which began its phase out of incandescent bulbs with the rest of the EU in 2009, the voices of reaction have already been heard, grumbling that uh, their God given right to high energy light bulbs are being infringed. In historical terms, however, that rise is an extremely recent one, as the first tungsten filament was introduced exactly 100 years ago. Our true light heritage consists of the oil lamps and candles that were used for millennia. The Industrial Revolution gave us two new ways of lightening our homes, workplaces and cities, kerosene, distilled from petroleum, and town gas produced from coal. The drawback of these materials was that they depend on a naked flame, which provides little illumination, caused air pollution, and 
on occasion he exploded. Uh, safety lumps. Also, Thomas Edison is usually accredited uh, with the invention of the light bulb. He was one of over 20 invention inventors of scientists who contributed to its development. The first practical demonstration of the principle came in 1802, when the British chemist Humphrey Davy passed an electrical current through a platinum wire. But without enclosing it in a protective glass bulb, Davy's light experiment was just a scientific curiosity not the commercial venture. The light he produced was not very bright. The platinum filament was expensive and burned out quickly. And the demonstration had taken place in the edge long before large scale electricity generation was technically feasible. Edison's genius was not the invention of the light bulb, but its successful commercialization. Automatically, he had a good product. A bow was a carbonized bamboo filament that could burn for 1,200 hours and that outshone and outlasted most of its rivals. But there are several possible stages needed before the world got the 100 watt incandescent light bulb. In 1904, a Hungarian company produced the first tungsten filament which improved on the carbon alternatives. Finally, in 1906, William College of General Electric devel developed the ductile tungsten, which allowed the wire to be tightly coiled like a miniature spring. This, this not only extended the life of the filament, but it also produced a much brighter light. The last refine, uh, ref, refinement was to fill the bulb with an inert gas that increased the bulb's uh, luminosity and reduced the blackening. By 19, 1914, GE's tungsten filament light bulbs were the market leaders, outlasting and outselling all their rivals. Hard nose. The alloy of tungsten and carbon tungsten uh, carbide, or simply carbide, is one of the hardest alloys in use today, with a Mohr scale rating of 8.5 to 9, diamond being 10, its hardness and high melting point 500 to 100 Fahrenheit, 2870 Celsius degree. Make it, make it suitable for drill bits and high performance tools used to machine carbon, machine carbon steel and stainless steel. The second major application of carbide is in armor uh, piercing ammunition being in use since the World War II for small arms and aircraft round aircraft rounds used against tanks and other armored vehicles. Zinc, transition metal. Uh, Sufarite and zinc bearing oils. Chemical formula Z. Historically, zinc was alloyed with copper to make brass, which was used to make ornaments. Most common modern application for metallic zinc is to protect iron and steel from corrosion through the process known as gal galvan galvanization. Galvanization is, is itself the product of a biological experiment in 18, 
1800 that led to the invention of the first electrical battery. Frog with battery included. Sometimes a scientific invention has an unlikely genesis, but the ones that must rank as one of the oldest is the discovery of the electro electrochemical cell by Asendro Volta, which was inspired by an exper exper experiment conducted on a frog's leg by a fellow scientist, Luigi Galvani. There are several versions of the story uh, that Gavani was passing an ex external current through a dead frog's leg and noticed that it began to twitch, that he was dissect dissecting a frog's leg and noticed that it began to, well, I don't know, dissect the frog's leg attached to a copper fruit with an iron scalpel. was an iron scalpel again causing the leg to twitch or that it was his assistant who touched an exposed nerve nerve and the frog's leg was a metal scalp scalpel triggering the con contraction of the dead muscles which were whichever is correct garboni concluded that the animal tissue contained bioelectricity Upon hearing of the accidental experiment, Bolger came to a very different conclusion. He realized that the frog's leg did not contain electricity, but Mary conducted it. Mary conducted it, and that the electrical effect that Galvani had noticed was caused by a reaction between the two metals present facilitated by the frog. In order to prove his theory, Bolta built the first electro electrochemical cell, the Boltaic pile, as the device was non non was not something that you could put into your TV remote or tran transistor radio. First made in 1800. The pile consisted, consisted of stacks of zinc and copper discs separated by cardboard soaked soak in, soak in brine. Soak in Brian, the, the this were the ele electrical rolls and the Brian was the electro electrical light, the electrical electrical conductor. When the top and the bottom discs were connected by wire, an electric current flowed uh, through the pile. Dry electricity during the next eight decades. Inventors improved on Bolter's wet battery uh, design, experimented with other materials. Zinc continued to be a permanent fixture, featuring in the Daniel, Daniel cell of 1836, the Grove cell of 1844, and the Leclanche cell of 1866. Finally, in 1886, Dr. Carl Gassner patented the first dry battery, 
which refers to liquid there all right Directed electron right with plaster of plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris. Uh -huh. Mm. Uh -huh. Use the zinc cap as the negative terminal and used carbon powder uh, contained manganese dioxide as the positive terminal. Zinc carbon batteries are still in use today and being the cheapest to manufacture. They are usually the ones that are packed with products that are advertised as having batteries included. In the modern version, the tubular outer shell of the battery is made of zinc with a metal plate at the bottom, the minus terminal. This uh, ammonium chloride paste as the electrolyte surrounding the carbon rod shell uh, sheeted in manganese oxide which is attached to a metal cup, the plus terminal at the top of the battery Today, you can still buy several update, updated versions of uh, Gassner, Gassner's battery. The zinc chrome battery just described the very common alkaline zinc manganese dioxide batteries that you are probably using in your consumer electronics and the high end nickel oxyhydrocyte oxy zinc mang uh, manganese dioxide and Nickel ox oxy hydroxide battery. Wow. Historically, zinc was alloyed with copper to make brass, brass, which is used to make ornaments, weapons, coins, and containers. The most common modern application for metallic zinc is to protect iron and steel from corrosion through the process known as galvanization. Galvanization is, it, galvanization is itself the product product of a biological experiment in A1800 that led to the invention of the first electrical button. Frog with battery included. Sometimes a scientific invention has an unlikely genesis, but the one that must rank as one of the oddest is the discovery of the electrochemical cell, electrochemical battery, by Alessandro Volta, which was inspired by an exp experiment conducted on a frog's leg by a fellow scientist Luigi Galvani. There are several versions of the story that Galvani was passing an external current through a dead frog's leg and noticed that it began to twitch. He was dissecting a frog's leg 
and not that it began to twitch. Oh. It was as if a frog's leg attached to a copper hook with an iron scalpel, again causing the leg to twitch, or that it was his assistant who touched an exposed nerve in the frog's leg with a metal scalpel, scalpel. Triggering the, triggering the contraction of the dead muscles, whichever is correct. Gabony con concluded that the animal tissue contained bioelectricity. Upon hearing of the accidental experiment, Walter came to a very different conclusion. He theorized that the frog's leg did not contain electricity, but memory conducted it. And that the electrical effect that Galvani had noticed was caused by a reaction between the two metals present facilitated by the frog. In order to prove his theory, Walter built the first electrochemical cell, the voltaic bol pile, as the device was known, was not something that you could put into your TV. Uh, remote or transistor radio. First made in 1800, the pile consisted of stacks of zinc and copper discs separated by cardboards soaked in, uh, soaked in brine. The disc were the ele electrodes and the brine was the electrotile, the electrical conductor. When the top and the bottom disks were connected by wire, an electric current follows through the pile. Dry electricity. During the next eight, uh, during the next eight decades, inventors improved on Volta's work badly, designed and exper experimented with other materials. Zinc continued to be a prominent fixture featuring in the Danny, Daniel cell of 1836. The Grove cell of 1844 and the Lake Lanche cell of 1866. Finally, in 1886, Dr. Carl Gassner patented the first dry battery, which replaced the liquid electrotype with plaster of Paris, used the zinc cap as the negative terminal and used carbon powder containing the manganese dioxide as the positive terminal. Zinc carbon batteries are still in use today and being the cheapest to manufacture. They are usually the ones that are packed with products that are advertised as having batteries included in the modern version. The tubular outer shell of the battery is made of zinc with a metal plate at the bottom, the minus terminal, with uh, ammonium chloride paste as the electro electro type elect electro electrolyte surrounding the carbon rod shield, uh, sheeted in manganese oxide, which is attached to a metal carbon, the plus terminal. At the top of the battery, today. You can still buy several updated versions of uh, Gassner's battery, the zinc carbon battery, just, just to describe the very common alkaline zinc manganese dioxide batteries that you are probably using in your consumer electronics and the high end nickel ox oxy hydroxide zinc manganese dioxide and nickel uh, oxy hydro hydroxide battery.
Uh, Christopher wrote with history at Cambridge, where he graduated with a double first, double first, before becoming technology correspondent for the Sunday Times. In 1994, he won the Tech Seco Award for the Science Journalist of the Year. After leaving, uh, leaving journalism, he ran a number of internet and educational publishing businesses. In 2006, he decided to homeschool his two daughters and the inspiration of write his first book, What on Earth Happened, published in 2008, came during a four-month tour of Europe with his family. Introduction. What is life? What forces are in control? Why have creatures evolved as they are? Where does uh, humanity fit in? Unlike Charles Darwin's theory published 150 years ago, this book is not chiefly concerned with the origin of species, but with the influences and impacts that living things have had on the path of evolution on each other and on our mutual environment, environment, planet Earth. This is an average version of what on Earth evolved, roughly half the length of the original hardback. Also, it excludes a number of narratives which put the impact of each group of species into their overall evolutionary context. I hope you agree that the individual biographies of those 100 extraordinary living things still speak for themselves. The first part surveys, surveys the uh, mechanics, mechanics of evolution before mankind, from the earliest repl replicating molecules to the rapid rise of mammals following the death of the dinosaurs, profiles 50 of the most successful life forms. From now on, informally described, described as a species that emerges through natural selection up to the, up to the time when modern humans first trot the arse.